powerful name of Jesus Christ. I know this is not the ideal way for us to be worshiping together, but here we are. And I want to encourage you to contact me and others with a call, a text, or an email. Let's stay connected. And now, let's prepare our hearts for worship. God of life, present and promised, you are the one to whom we call. For you are the one who hears, and you are the one who acts, bringing us new life with your grace, love, and power. Lead us in our time of worship, that we may be prepared to follow your lead in places where life is at risk, places where hope seems far away, places where dreams die. Help us live the teachings we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing together hymn number 419, I am thine, O Lord.
morning scripture can be found in Ezekiel 37 verses 1 through 14. Ezekiel was from a priestly line and was a contemporary of Jeremiah. He literally lived during the time of the fall of Jerusalem. He was among those captured and taken away in chains to a new land, far from where the land they had been promised. Israel's king was in chains its temple was demolished, its holy city was leveled, its leaders were taken into captivity. There, by the rivers of Babylon, the Hebrews cried. And Israel knew it had no hope. Israel knew it had no future. Israel knew it was dead, and it had lost all hope of future life. Ezekiel's prophetic ministry took place in the context of the exile. He spent much of his time telling the people of Israel that Jerusalem would indeed fail and fall. And so they would not expect a quick return to their land. Instead, they should focus their energies on living in obedience to God while in exile. In the end, however, in a memorable vision of dry bones coming to life, Ezekiel prophesied that the temple would be restored and the people would return. Hear these words from Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. And he asked me, Son of man, can these bones be? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the boy bones came together, 
bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then God said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, so that they can live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken. And I have The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Over the last several weeks, people all over the world have probably felt like we are in a valley of dry bones. Some without hope, filled with despair, certain nothing could ever be whole or back to normal again. And I confess that I have felt that way. But let me tell you, we really don't want to stay in that valley. The valley of dry bones that Ezekiel is describing was the site of a great battle in a brutal ancient war. The battle raged for a long time, and the bodies lay in stacks. Finally, when no soldier could go on, the battle ended, leaving the bodies to rot in the noonday sun and the dark. Wild animals came, birds circled and landed. The bodies had become a feast for the wild animals. And this process takes time and wreaks havoc and destruction upon those who gave their lives. Ants and other insects arrive and cleanse the scene even more fully. And finally, the valley becomes a valley full of bones. By now, the destruction is so complete that no two bones remain connected, and yet nature is not quite finished. The valley lies in a hot land, and the sun and the noonday heat come again and again, and ever so slowly the bones bleach and dry and fall completely apart. The valley becomes a river of despair, populated only by lost. This is the valley of domestic abuse, the valley of poverty, the valley of disease. It's a valley where all wars are fought, and here in this valley, lives are demolished. This is the valley where people and churches lose touch with God and find themselves ravaged by the world. It's a place of war and hatred and oppression. In this valley, no family stays whole, no child is beloved, no wife treated with respect, no black, yellow, or brown person is accepted. In this valley, churches die, families crumble, lives shrivel. Parents abandon their children, and neighbor steals from neighbor. It is a place without joy, where weeping and wailing can be heard. Those who come here lose all hope, and the cry of the day becomes, why me, Lord? Don't think, though, that all trips to the valley involve one person at a time. Entire populations, millions at a time, visit the valley, yet each one strangely finding themselves alone. And in that valley, six million Jews went up in smoke. Ten million Jews went up in smoke. church has entered the valley again and again. It entered the valley when Martin Luther split from the popes. It was there the day they burned witches and when the Grand Inquisitor wrapped people of questionable spirit. It visited the valley during World War II when church 
church leaders remain silent even when they knew about Holocaust. The church re-enters the valley every time and loses touch with the spirit of the Lord. Ezekiel was a God's prophet. And the prophets are something unique in the history of religion. We seldom speak about their greatest gift, their ability to show humankind how to self-correct when it moves in the wrong direction. The prophets were given the ability to see and to offer ways to make course corrections, like giant compasses steering a ship through dangerous waters, like sonar sounding out the depths of radar showing what lay ahead. Their visions became a guiding word. Again and again, they perceived wrong directions and wrote to show people of faith how to follow God. And when the people sinned, the prophets announced the sin. Repent, they said. Then they saw the suffering that would occur because of the sin. But in the midst of suffering, when all the people could see only despair, the prophets saw hope. The prophets, blessed with the word from God, offered hope as a guiding word. Ezekiel and others with them were taken into slavery. Their nation was plowed under and their captors demanded that they sing and dance by the banks of the foreign river. The Spirit of the Lord lifted Ezekiel up out of captivity and took him into the vision of a valley filled with dry bones. And the Lord asked him a question. Son of man, can these bones and I can tell you from first-hand experience that the human answer to that question is, no, these bones can never live again. But Ezekiel didn't give the human answer to God's question. He gave a God answer. Oh, sovereign Lord, he said, you alone know. The amazing thing is that God turns to humanity to overcome the despair. Maybe some of you remember this quote from President John F. Kennedy. Some men see things as they are and ask why. Others see them as they can be and ask why not. God tells Ezekiel to speak a word. Ezekiel speaks the word and hears a clicking and a clacking, a rattle of bones seeking bones. Then as the bones came together, muscles and tendons formed and skin grew to cover the whole. Yet there was no one. The Lord commanded Ezekiel to prophesy to the wind itself, and when he did, the wind blew breath and life into the lifeless body, bodies there in the valley of dry bones. Ezekiel, this prophet of vision, this man could see present reality more clearly, more certainly than any other, and his eyes could see the he sees life coming upon dry bones, an army, the whole people of Israel restored to life, made able to stand, breathing through the spirit of the living God. We are moving toward the end of Lent, and the scripture readings offered for today focus upon a present reality. That reality will come into full bloom in a few weeks when we celebrate Easter. The readings for today point us toward what is yet to come. Had we chosen the selected gospel for today, we would have found the same lesson of new life, the raising of Lazarus from the dead. Reality? Reality is this. We believe in life after death. We believe in restoration and rebirth and life eternal. We are Christians. We need not believe in a God of death. We believe in a God who rolls away the stone, opens the tomb, lifts up the dead and broken body, and restores it to life. We are a people called to life, to restoration, to rebirth. We are Easter people. We travel through the valley. The darkness of Holy Week lies ahead, which reminds us of the suffering of Jesus. But we can see beyond that black cloud to bright Sunday morning. We see beyond the boundaries of death all the way to resurrection. We who are God's people know and experience despair, but we hear the prophet's word of hope. We correct course 
rediscover joy and move into the storm, fearful but certain, hesitant but courageous, our weakness overcome by the strength of God. We find new life on the other side of the valley. I don't know if you are in the valley of dry bones today, but if you are, Hear the prophecies of Ezekiel and know that the bones can come together again, that muscle and ligaments can grow anew. Hear the prophecy of Ezekiel to the wind and feel the Spirit of the Lord coming into your lifeless soul. Let us hear these words as church and press forward. If we move ahead filled with the Holy Spirit, nothing can stand before us. We will experience resurrection, life anew, wholeness, and the goodness of our God. Listen to the wind and know that you are not alone. God is there. God has a word for you. God has never abandoned you and will never turn away from you. Come out of the valley of dry bones and know the fullness of God's love. Thanks be. Please pray. Loving and gracious God, we pray for all who experience dead ends and dry bones. You know who they are. For the glory of Jesus alone, I ask you to demonstrate the truth, beauty, and power of the gospel by pouring out the Holy Spirit on our church families in a most tangible and transformed way. Make yourself unmistakably known as the Lord in our midst. Heavenly Father, we pray that you bring resurrection in our lives, which is freely given to those who turn to Jesus Christ by your grace through faith. In the powerful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And now please, will you join me in our final hymn? 